Watch me to some extent to make sure you can see how I solve mine and you can and so forth. So let me go through there. So the fir first ones are just conversions. So I'll do the first one a little more slowly and then we'll go through these. I will say this. I'm so I'll show you my work here and then I'll talk through this so you can kind of see my work here. So on the exams and on the quizzes, do you have to solve them the same way I do in class or on my answer key? And the answer is no. The only credit you get is your final answer. I do not, I will give you scratch paper. So on the exams, you have scratch paper to write things out and do all that on paper. It would be crazy not to do it on paper. But I will not grade. Even though I collect that so you don't get to keep it, I don't grade your work. I only grade your final answer because in pharmacy, since we're, we're now finally, it's not a math class for just learning math, it's to become a pharmacist. In the end, you need to be able to what? Get the right answer. What only really matters in the end is the right answer and getting it consistently. So my point to all of this is you don't have to work it the way that I worked it, okay? The way that I choose to show you how I work it though does is designed to help people that need a little more assistance. I mean, the people that math isn't are as strong a skill, what I have found that works the best is to be consistent in using as much dimensional analysis as possible. Dimensional analysis is simply setting up units times a ratio of units times a ratio of units and going through and canceling my units all the way across so that you can see how to go from point one to the final step. So you can set these up more as a proportion versus this. You can do these however you want, but I would strongly suggest if I can help teach you and coach you at all, I like the dimensional analysis. You can see your work. You can see if you're gonna get the right answer even before you do it because of the way you set it up. So let me explain that by now. So how, we wanna convert 6.5 pounds to kilograms. So where do we start with? Well, we want, uh, oh, I didn't hit the right button here. Pen, pen. All right, so let me go show my answer here. So this is what we want, 6.5 pounds. So let's start with that. And what I mean by dimensional analysis is I want to convert from pounds to kilograms. So what do I have? What did I was provide you that had a conversion, a ratio of pounds to kilograms? The ratio I gave you is that for every one pound, that is equivalent to 554 grams. That is a ratio. I can use that ratio here, and I set up with the units where I want them, because remember what I want to do is multiply and cancel out my units. So if I'm going to start with pounds, I'm going to multiply by this ratio expressed as 454 grams over one pound. That way pounds cancel, and now if I just did that math, I'd be in grams. But you've got to be careful with all of my questions. You must convert it to what the question specifies. And it will always specify the unit to give me your final answer in. And will also specify how many decimal places to round your final answer to. Okay? So realize here, we're in kilogram. We need it in kilograms. I did not provide you the conversion of grams to kilograms. That's what I expect you to know in the metric system. So can you guys tell me how many grams per kilogram? 1,000 grams per one kilogram. You can express it however you want. By doing it that way, though, I'm going to put one kilogram on top over 1,000 grams so that, again, if I divide by that 1,000, grams cancel, and my final answer ends up in kilograms. Is everyone okay on the way I set that up and why? And I'll just show you that I won't belabor each one of these steps going forward, but that's how you can do multiple steps after each other. The other thing that gets brought up, the final answer needs to be rounded. And I always mean final answer here. I'll give you the number of decimal points. What about if you just did 6.5 divided by 554? Don't round. Do not round until the final step. Okay, so if you've got multiple steps, depending on how you solve it, the, it's not telling you to round each step at two decimal points. It's telling you to do what? The final answer to two decimal points. The, the, the most accurate number possible. Do not round your numbers in your calculator until you get to the very end. That way you'll have the most precise value possible. Okay? Okay, not difficult. I'll try to speed up a little bit. Here, now we want to start with two cups, all right? And we eventually want to get to milliliters. Now, I could have just told you how many cups per milliliter. That would have been a kind thing to do. Did I do that? No, I did not. I'm not a kind math instructor. So you have to use what I gave you. Did I did what conversion did I give you for cups? I said there's one cup for eight fluid ounces. So let's set that up again, such that we're going to multiply by eight fluid ounces per one cup, so that cups cancel. Now I need to use some conversion for fluid ounces. Well, I know there's one fluid ounce has two tablespoons. So if I set it up so that fluid ounces cancel, then my numerator is two tablespoons. I've now converted my two cups times eight is 16 fluid ounces, times two is 32 tablespoons. So I'm in tablespoons now, and then I can use my final ratio to be able to convert from tablespoons to milliliters, all right? 
And so by then multiplying by 15, I got a final answer of 480 milliliters. Get on that. All right, so let me just kind of show you my answers here. I won't go through the whole thing. Two yards to meters. Here I'm putting yards to feet, then feet to inches, inches to centimeters. Now remember, I wanted it in meters, but the unit conversion I gave you was only in centimeters. So you could use all of my information up to this point, but for this last step, you've got to remember to convert this value in centimeters to match my meters. We've got to know that for every one meter, there's 100 centimeters. And again, divide by that so that centimeters cancel and you get your final answer in meters. All right, this last one, I'd say the most difficult one of the bunch, only in the sense that this, you've got to be able to take this and convert it to this, meaning put 1,500 milligrams over one minute, okay? So that you can then, because this question requires you to cancel and change out both the numerator units, that is, you've got to go from milligrams to grams, but also the denominator units from minutes essentially to days. Okay, and you can do that in a couple of different ways. And you can do whatever conversion you want first. I chose to convert weight first, so I, I took my proportion that I'm starting with, and I converted milligrams to grams by dividing by 1,000. And in the end, that gives me the right number, uh, units in the numerator, but I'm still here in minutes. So let's convert my minutes. Minutes is in the denominator, so I'm going to multiply by 60 minutes per hour so that my minutes cancel this way. And I'm now in grams per hour, but... I noun it in day, so how many hours per day? 24 hours per day, I put 20, I multiply by 24 so that the units cancel, and my final units would be in grams per day. Everyone okay with that? I'm really kind of short on time here, so let's see here. So let me, I, I may skip some of these. Okay, step one, okay, that was good. Now, the whole point of question two is, question one had a bunch of ratios, question two is about proportions. That is setting ratios equal to each other to set up a proportion. So in this question, it wants to know how many cases of influenza anaphylaxis or would be predicted to occur in this population when the rate is estimated to be 0.13 cases per 100,000 vaccinated. These two numbers are related to each other. Do you see the relationship there? That is a ratio. There are 0.13 cases for every 100,000. So just set that up as a ratio. Okay. Once you have that as a ratio, you can set that equal to this proportion. So this is where, again, I'll harp on this all semester, write down your units. You guys are lazy and sloppy on your work. I see that. You just write numbers down and do stuff in your head. Trust me, to keep track of this, you have to write things down. Because what we know is the population. So that needs to go into the denominator. What we don't know is how many cases. So that's why X is on the top. So if it's 0.13 cases over 100,000, equal to some unknown number of cases over how much we're actually vaccinating, which is the 3 million. Basically solve for that and you get four cases, okay? The rest of these questions just for question two, just reverse that. So here it wants to know if there are 16 cases per this amount, what is the rate per 100,000? That's just a proportion because we know we have a rate of 16 per 1.28 million, set that equal to some unknown per 100,000. That is what a proportion is. It's, a, it's a, where you set two ratios equal to each other. But to make sure you don't mess up the multiplying and dividing, watch your units here. Because X then, if this is vaccinated, X is going to be cases. That's what we're solving for is cases. All right? So let me keep going. So I'll skip those. You, the, the key will have all of the answers here in a little bit. That key will have all my answers that I'm skipping. I love this one. So let me review this question here. It says, now butyrol sulfate HFA oral inhaler shown below. What is the total weight in milligrams of albuterol sulfate contained in the inhaler? So you have to use this picture to be able to extract some information. First of all, how much drug is in there is going to be a total of 200 metered inhalations. So we're going to need to know that. There's 200 puffs. So how much drug is in there per puff? What does it say right there? 90 micrograms per actuation per puff. Oh, but that's misleading because you need to read the details down here because each puff has 90 micrograms of albuterol, but that's equivalent to what? 108 micrograms of albuterol sulfate. And what is the question asking for? Is it asking for albuterol or albuterol sulfate? Albuterol sulfate, so that's the number we have to use. So once you've got that, it's not difficult. We're basically starting with our 200 puffs. From right here, we're gonna say that the ratio that we need to know is that there's 108 micrograms of albuterol sulfate per puff. 
So when I basically multiply that by the number of puffs or doses there, that gives me the total weight of albuterol sulfate. But in what unit? Micrograms. So I need milligrams. So what is my final conversion? To convert micrograms to milligram, you need to know that there's a thousand micrograms per milligram. So you divide by a thousand to cancel the units, and that gives you the final weight of albuterol sulfate in milligrams. All right? Now, easier question in some ways and trickier and just as tricky in another. So because the way, and we're going to all, you're going to be calculating tons of doses. That's what a pharmacist does. Either calculate a dose or verify a dose for a patient. So here we go. A pediatric patient who weighs 22 pounds has been prescribed cephalexin, which is an antibiotic, at a dose of 100 milligrams per kilogram per day. Okay? So this is important. Each one of these units is important. So how many milligrams per kilogram? 100. Per what? Per day. But does that mean it's only dosed once a day? No. Some drugs are different. So this drug specifically needs to be dosed every six hours. So this is a daily dose, not an individual dose. Because what the question wants to know is what then is an individual dose for this patient? What dose are you going to give them every six hours such that that totals a total of what? 100 milligrams per kilogram per day. So the way we express doses can be tricky. So in this case, the first step is to take the weight, the 22 pounds. And now I will always give you kilograms to pounds. So one kilogram is 2.2 pounds. Trust me on this. This is when you got to memorize. It just will make life so much easier. And yet I've still seen P2s and P3s multiply by 2.2 instead of divide by 2.2. So you must be careful with this conversion. Oftentimes we're given weight in pounds and most dosing is in milligrams or in kilograms, I should say. So again, just make sure you set up this proportion correctly so that you cancel pounds and you end up in kilograms by dividing by 2.2, okay? So if you do that, then we have the weight in kilograms. Then we're gonna pull that conversion down and multiply this. And also remember it says kilograms per day. Remember this means this is in the numerator and then everything else just gets stuck in the denominator, but don't skip them. So I did kilograms dash day, so that if I cancel with my kilograms there, I know my final answer to this point is still milligrams per what? Per day, don't drop the day. That is still milligrams per day, okay? I'm gonna start again with that and say, okay, I wanted not milligrams per day, but per dose. And this is where I've set this up and you can see my work, but it's, it, it's where if you can, this be, can become intuitive, it will make it so much easier. If something's dosed once a day, how many hours between doses? This is stupid, bear with me. 24 hours between doses if it's once a day. What if it's twice a day? How many hours? 12, three times a day, eight. And if it's four times a day? Six, because again, we're dividing 24 by six or by eight or those things. The sooner you can kind of remember those together, it makes it easier. Because if it's given then every six hours, how many doses per day? Every six hours would be how many doses? Four, so we just take 100 divided by four and get 25. I mean, so that's basically what we're doing here. This is how you can do it with dimensional analysis. It's 100 milligrams per day. In one day, there's how many hours? 24 hours, and how many hours per dose? Six hours per dose gives me this. So do you see where you can do dimensional analysis to get it exactly? Certainly there are some steps you can skip if it's intuitive about how to convert to that. All right, so the last question says, okay, that's how much they're gonna need. What volume of the actual product do you need to dispense? So that was the dose of drug, but this is the commercial product you're using. What volume of this do you need? So going back and I skip this part of the question, the patient needs this for seven days. So they need to be seven days. And in the previous question, we calculated 1,000 milligrams per day. So seven days times 1,000 milligrams per day means they need 7,000 milligrams. What will convert a weight of something to a volume? Concentration. That is the second most often thing you're going to do in this class is you're going to take a concentration. A concentration is the relationship of the weight of one thing to another. It can be a solid, solid concentration. In this case, it's a solid liquid. It's the fact that this liquid has 250 milligrams. That is the weight of the drug per what volume? Per five mils. It's a ratio, but it's a concentration. So set up the concentration so that you cancel the units you want. I want to go from milligrams to milliliters, so I'm going to multiply by five milliliters on top over 250 milligrams of the denominator so that the units cancel, and I get a final answer of 140 milliliters. Okay? 
All right, and okay, I am really out of time. Do I have time for one more? Okay, the last one is pretty straightforward. You can kind of get from the thing. So let me try to work through question number five. This is an endless practice problem. Okay, from chapter four. I think you look under chapter four, this is an endless practice problem is a good example. So those of you who work as pharmacy technicians know that when you bill insurance, when you try to have something to pay, you have to tell them well, how many days supply and what volume of the drug that they're doing. So in this prescription, this is they basically have a syringe that has 80 milligrams contained in 0.2 milliliters. That's what's in the syringe. We want a three month supply for a patient and they're gonna inject 150 milligrams three times a day during that amount of time. So I'll just try to go quickly through this. First thing we need to do is figure out, okay, what is a three month supply going to mean? How many days is that? Three months times, now is there always 30 days per month? Sometimes there's 31, sometimes there's 28. The average value that we use with typical value you're gonna use for insurance is 30 days. So three months times 30 days per month gives you 90 days. So we need a 90 day supply. Bring that down to here. Okay, 90 days worth. How many doses per day? Look at the SIG. What does the SIG say in the instructions for the patient? Three times a day. So you're, for 90 days, you don't just need 90 syringes. You need basically three doses every single day. So 90 days times three doses per day means we need 270 doses. All right? But here's the trick with this question. A syringe itself may not be a dose because the dose is 150 milligrams. Would you agree that that's what the doctor wrote? So the dose is 150 milligrams. The product contains essentially 80 milligrams in a syringe, and we cannot do a partial syringe. So if one syringe has 80 milligrams, what is 150 divided by 80? It's like 1.8 something. We have to round what? Up, you have to round up. You, I mean, even if it was 1.1, they would need two syringes to give them the full dose, would you agree? So in this case, they need two syringes, I'm sorry, two syringes to give them the dose. Okay, so if they need two syringes and there's 270 doses, then 270 times two is 540 syringes total. That's how many syringes they would need to be able to use two of them three times a day for 90 days, all right? But lastly, the insurance doesn't wanna know how many syringes, they wanna know what volume of drug. So we know each syringe is 0.2 mils. So if we take our total of 540 syringes times the 0.2 mils, the volume to uh, dispense for the patient to bill to insurance would be 108 milliliters.